Hello everyone and welcome to a new lecture in the ECG course in the topic of myocardial ischemia and today we are having a resume lecture about the ST segment depression and we are doing the same as we have performed in the lecture of ST segment elevation. So today we are going to speak about the ECG criteria of ST depression and what is its clinical significance and also we are going to learn the different causes of ST depression beside myocardial ischemia because as we said in ST elevation the ST segment deviation is not only caused by myocardial ischemia but there are other diseases that can cause ST depression and ST elevation. We remember this terminology, of course, which is acute coronary syndrome, which means that the angina pain occurs at rest without any provocation. And we can divide it into two categories, which is the presence of ST elevation, indicating ST elevation myocardial infarction or STEMI, and the absence of ST elevation, indicating non-ST elevation acute coronary syndrome. And we, as we understood from the term non-ST elevation, this means that the ECG may be normal, may show ST depression, may show T-wave inversion, or may show transient ST elevation. So it doesn't show persistent ST elevation. And as we remember, non-ST elevation includes both unstable angina and non-STEMI. And of course, these two categories are different from chronic coronary syndrome, which means that the adrenal pain occurs with exertion or with stressful situation, and so this patient is considered to be stable. That's why its previous term was stable coronary artery disease, but it's now changed it in the last AC guidelines to chronic coronary syndrome. Of course, we remember that the J point is the reference point to assess the ST segment as it is the end of the complex and the start of the ST segment. And the ST segment should start either electric except in V2 and V3, where it may be slightly elevated. So always look at the J point. And as we mentioned before, isoelectric comparison to what? To the TP segment. As the TP segment is the isoelectric line in which there is no any electrical activity between two cardiac cycles. And so it is the reference line to which we compare ST segment and we can compare PR segment in case of pericarditis to the TP segment. We have spoken before about the ST elevation in the last lecture, and we mentioned that they occur in the case of transmural myocardial ischemia, which can occur in case of STEMI or vasospastic angina, and it usually occurs in the lead facing the infarction. So, for example, inferior wall myocardial infarction would lead to ST elevation in the inferior leads, and of course, the same in the anterior leads. Whereas in ST depression, it usually occurs in case of subendocardial myocardial ischemia, not in transmural and it occurs as a direct effect of subendocardial ischemia or sometimes as a reciprocal depression in response to ST elevation and we have spoken about this issue of course many times in many of our lectures. We have three famous morphologies of T segment depression which is the horizontal, down sloping or up sloping according to the direction of the ST segment starting from the J point towards the T wave. We usually of course consider the horizontal and downsloping ST depression to be more clinically significant for myocardial ischemia, but don't ignore upsloping depression because some case of myocardial depression or of myocardial ischemia, I'm sorry, may be associated with upsloping ST depression. And there is a famous example, which is a De Winter syndrome, which show upsloping ST depression with hyperacute T waves. We remember also from the fourth universal definition of MI in 2018 that the ST elevation has a definition of Elevation of the J point in two contiguous leads with a cut point of 1 mm in all leads apart from V2, V3, which show a different cut point 2 mm in males more than 40, 2.5 mm in males less than 40, and 1.5 mm in females regardless age. And also, they have put definition for the ST depression T wave changes of new horizontal or down sloping. Here, they exclude the up sloping more than or equal 0.5 mm in two contiguous leads and or T wave inversion more than 1 mm in two contiguous leads with prominent R wave or R S ratio more than 1. Because, as of course, we know, if the complex is predominantly negative, T wave would be normally inverted. In the 2020 AC guidelines for non-ST elevation acute coronary syndrome, they have put a different definition for ST segment depression or different criteria with a J point depressed by more than or equal 0.5 mm in V2 and V3 or more than 1 mm in other ECG leads, followed by horizontal or down sloping ST depression for more than 80 milliseconds, indicating two small square in one or more leads except AV 
R. So the cutoff point is 0.5 in V2V3, 1 mm in other ECG leads and then the duration for about two small square. My advice, don't always stick to the definition that if the patient is not fulfilling them completely, you exclude him and you discharge the patient. No, sometimes the patient may be coming to you in an early stage and if you repeat the ECG after about 15 or 20 minutes, he will be fulfilling the criteria. So don't omit the ST segment changes if it is not fulfilling the whole criteria. Now, what do we need to assess when we see ST depression in ECG? Of course, the magnitude of ST depression in millimeter, distribution of ST depression, which is the number of leads showing them and which are the leads showing ST depression, the morphology, and is there any ST elevation of their ECG leads? It looks like the same as a comment on the ST segment elevation in the last lecture. Of course, here we have added the fourth point of searching for ST elevation because sometimes ST depression occurs as reciprocal changes to opposing ST elevation. And remember and remember, the deeper the ST depression and the wider it spread, the worse the clinical prognosis of non-ST elevation kit chronic syndrome. And as we remember from this paragraph quoted from the AC guidelines, that ST depression is not only a qualitative marker, but also a quantitative marker according to the number of leads and the magnitude of ST depression. So this rule applies as well to the ST segment elevation and also to the ST segment depression. So let's look at this ACG here. We can see here that the patient is having ST segment depression in V4, 5, and 6, and also in LE2, 3, AVF, which is minimal ST depression. Indicates that if a patient is presenting with chest pain, it may indicate non-ST elevation acute chronic syndrome. But remember, before jumping to the diagnosis of non-ST elevation acute chronic syndrome based on the presence of ST depression in ACG, make sure that it is not reciprocal depression to opposing ST elevation, it is not left main equivalence and it is not the winter syndrome. So for example, in this ECG, we can see here that the patient is having ST depression lateral leads, denoting non-ST elevation could current syndrome. No, there is ST elevation inferior leads indicating inferior STEMI. Here in this example, we can see here ST depression in inferior leads, but there is ST elevation in lateral leads indicating high lateral STEMI. Let's look at this ECG here. We can see here ST depression in the inferior leads, but there is ST elevation in V1 to V3, indicating anteroceptal STEMI. Here in this ECG example, we can see ST depression in V2 and V3, but there is tall R wave with hyperacuity wave. What does this remind us of? Of course, posterior STEMI. And if we have are putting posterior ECG leads for this patient, we can detect ST elevation in V7, 8, and 9, as we discussed before. Here we can see that there is diffuse ST depression, lateral leads, and in inferior leads. And from V3 to V6, is it high risk non ST? No, it is left main equivalent as there is ST elevation in V1 and AVR, so indicates an equivalent of left main vessel affection or combined LDLCX, and this patient should be considered as STEMI. Here we can see ST depression from V3 to V5, but there is hyperacute T wave as the T wave exceeds more than two thirds of the complex amplitude. So we are speaking here about the winter syndrome, which indicates LED proximal occlusion, and so this patient should be considered as a STEMI, not non ST elevation acute coronary syndrome. So remember, ST depression can occur in non ST elevation acute coronary syndrome, which is a common situation to see, indicating the high risk non ST elevation acute coronary syndrome, but also it can occur in STEMI as a reciprocal depression to opposing ST elevation, left main equivalent, or the winter syndrome. There is an important question that we always ask ourselves in our clinical practice. ST elevation, of course, can localize the region of myocardial ischemia as we know. So, for example, ST elevation just leads indicating a tear wall MI, ST elevation inferior leads indicating fear wall MI, in one AVL indicating lateral wall MI. It makes sense. But does ST depression localize myocardial ischemia or not? Of course, the answer is that leads with ST depression don't reflect the affected myocardial region. And so ST depression, for example, in lead 2, 3, AVF, not necessarily implies that the ischemia is in the inferior wall. So ST depression, unfortunately, 
doesn't look like the myocardial ischemia as in ST segment elevation and cannot tell you where the culprit. The imaging may help you and of course the invasive coronary angiography but the ST depression itself, I'm sorry, not much. And so the answer is ST depression and T-wave inversion don't localize myocardial ischemia with two exceptions which is in villain syndrome as a deep symmetrical or biphasic T waves in precordial leads can localize lesion to be subtotal or total lady occlusion and in the winter syndrome as it shows upsloping ST depression with hyperacute T wave in precordial lead. So in these two examples they indicate proximal occlusion the LED. So this is the only example in which the ST segment and the T wave or the ST depression per se indicate or localize the area of myocardial ischemia and indicate the culprit vessel but in general no don't also forget that this rule applies to the treadmill test so the stress induced st depression don't localize myocardial ischemia whereas the stress induced st elevation can localize the ischemia so whenever you are performing treadmill test and you detect st depression for example in inferior leads or in chest leads this doesn't mean that the ischemia is the inferior wall or in the anterior wall respectively no it just indicate positive treadmill test or in some cases high risk test according to the parameters, but it doesn't look like the myocardial ischemia. Now we have finished the first part of our lecture and moving to the second interesting part of our lecture, which is the target of today's lecture. What can cause ST depression apart from myocardial ischemia? Of course, we have other causes like hypokalemia, secondary repolarization abnormality, which is sometimes called a strain pattern, the Jackson therapeutic effect, supraventricular tachycardia and AF with rapid ventricular rate. Let's start with the potassium disorder. What do you expect to find in hyperkalemia? We expect hyperQT wave, long PR interval, absent P wave, wide complex T elevation and in extreme cases sine wave pattern. And these are the life-threatening conditions that can result from severe hyperkalemia. So in hypokalemia we expect to find some different ACG features like T wave inversion, prominent U wave, long QT interval, and ST segment depression. And of course, the final result is to set the point, which is polymorphic VT on top of long QT intervals that can degenerate into VF and resulting in sudden cardiac arrest. So hyperkalemia cause hyperacute narrow pointed T waves with ST elevation as we have seen th in this example before. But in hypokalemia we can see ST depression with T wave inversion and long QT interval. Sometimes also prominent T wave can appear. So hypokalemia is one of the famous causes of ST depression that you need to exclude. And whenever you see ST segment depression with long QT interval, exclude please hypokalemia as it is a very famous cause of these two combined ECG features. Remember of course that hypokalemia is commonly associated with hypomagnesemia and so correction of both is mandatory to protect the heart against arrhythmias. So these are two saplings that usually come together. Let's move to a different issue in the ST segment. We remember of course that the complex represent ventricular depolarization, whereas from the end of the complex to the end of T wave represent a period of ventricular repolarization. So both ST segment and T wave indicates ventricular repolarization, although always T wave of course is the mean or the hallmark sign of ventricular repolarization. So any ST segment or T wave changes are considered to be repolarization abnormality and this moves us to the second cause of ST depression which is secondary repolarization abnormalities previously called the strain pattern but of course the first terminology is much more preferred. They usually accompany ventricular hypertrophy either left or right sided caused by resting repolarization abnormality but also they can occur in other diseases like bundle branch block and some structural heart disease like arrhythmogenic RV cardiomyopathy and when I speak about LVH I consider both the LVH secondary hypertension or stenosis or also hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. So for example, in VH the second JQ wave inversion and SC depression usually occur in V5, 6 plus minus in lateral leads 1 and EVL, whereas in RVH they usually occur in the right precordial lead V1, 2, 3 plus minus V4 and may also extend to the inferior leads. So here we can see the voltage criteria of left ventricular hypertrophy as indicated by the column line index 
And so we are speaking about LVH, but we can see here that there is T wave inversion and T segment depression in one AVL V5 V6 indicating LVH with second repolarization abnormality or sometimes called LVH with strain pattern. Here in this example, we can see here that the patient has ST segment depression and T wave inversion from V1 to V4 plus the inferior leads indicating RVH with second repolarization abnormality or RVH with strain pattern. In bundle branch proxic are the same or nearly the same distribution as ventricular hypertrophy in the corresponding chamber. So in left bundle, usually it occurs in V5, 6 plus minus 1 AVL, and in right bundle usually occurs in V1, 2, 3 plus minus V4. So in left bundle, they affect the left precordial lead, right bundles usually affect right precordial lead. So for example, here we can see that the patient is having ST segment depression and T of inversion in V5, V6, indicating secondary repolarization abnormality with left bundle. And here in right bundle, we can see here that the patient is having ST segment depression and T wave inversion in V2 and 3. And in V1, it shows nearly T of inversion without ST depression. So we are speaking about secondary repolarization abnormalities with right bundle. In this example, this patient is having a structural disease called arrhythmogenic RV cardiomyopathy, which we are going to speak later in a separate lecture. We can see here at the, at the end of the complex, this is like a positive deflection called the epsilon wave, plus T wave inversion in the right precordial leads and inferior leads. So this patient is having secondary repolarization abnormality caused by the arrhythmogenic RV cardiomyopathy and because the main chamber effect is RV although sometimes in extreme cases LV can be affected it affects usually the right precordial leads and of course we should mention that the ACG repolarization abnormality are considered to be one of the categories for diagnosis of arrhythmogenic RV cardiomyopathy category number three and of course it can be major criteria or minor criteria according to the distribution of the T wave inversion in the resting ECG. In paced rhythm as the generally epical RV pacing, so it causes left bundle branch block. We can see here that the patient is having ST depression in V4, 5 and 6. So of course, due to the left bundle, it can lead to secondary repolarization abnormalities in V4, 5 and 6, which are the left precordial leads as part of left bundle branch block. And so, paced rhythm can show both ST depression in left precordial leads and ST elevation in right precordial leads. Let's now move to another cause of ST depression and the famous cause in literature and in the undergraduate learning which is the Juxon therapeutic effect. We remember of course that the Juxon is a medication that is used to rate control in AF and sometimes in patients with LV dysfunction and it is characterized by presence of sagging in ST segment especially in V5 and 6 1 and EVL so we're speaking about the lateral leads with shortened QT interval so we can see for example here that the ST segment is showing like a concave depression and of course it seems like delayed in relation to the complex that's why it is called sagging of the ST segment here as well we can see here that it is occurring in lead 2 3 AVF and then V3 4 5 and 6 so sometimes they are current lateral leads but may extend to the inferior leads so sagging of ST segment is one of the famous cause of ST depression in patients taking digoxin and remember please sagging of ST segment is not a sign of digoxin toxicity it is just a sign of therapeutic intake of digoxin there are other signs of ACG to or digoxin toxicity in ACG that we are going to speak in a separate lecture for digoxin toxicity then another famous cause of ST depression which is the supraventricular tachycardia as we can see here the patient is having ST depression in V4, 5 and 6 and of course here he's having regular narcomplex tachycardia and I cannot see here definite sinus P waves so mostly it is SVT. Here also we can see more wider extent and deeper ST depression in V2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 and also in the inferior leads and in leads 1. So speaking about ST depression with SVT. Of course we have spoken about this issue. Yes, of course, in another lecture. ST depression during SVT can occur due to rate-dependent myocardial ischemia with the acceleration of the heart rate leading to supply demand mismatch or sometime as a repolarization abnormality which is more common with orthodromic AVRT but may also occur with AVNRT of course.
So in order to check whether it is caused by ischemia or not, we need to ask ourselves is the patient having chest pain or not and check his resting ECG after termination. Of course, we need to remind ourselves that in the AC guidelines of chronic crime syndrome 2019, they emphasize the notion that the ST segment alteration regarding during SVT should not be used as evidence of chronic heart disease, so routinely don't consider them as ischemia, but there are some points that we need to consider. If the ACG showed resolved AC depression after restoration of sinus rhythm, mostly it was secondary to orthodromic AVRT and there is a possibility of course that it is stress induced ischemia, but it may be just repolarization abnormality caused by the SVT which is very common with orthodromic AVRT. But if the patient is having persistent ST depression after restoring sinus rhythm, yes, sometimes it may be caused by ongoing myocardial ischemia and mostly it was the original cause of SVT. So when do I need to worry about the patient? If you're having persistent ST depression after restoring sinus rhythm, presence of chest pain with the tachycardia and we need to check which of them start first. Elevated cardiac markers, but significant elevation or detection or rise or fall in two sets. However, a small rise, of course, may occur with SVT and patient with multiple cardiac risk factors. In this case, the patient may need to be monitored in a CCU or Let's move to another cause with the AF with rapid ventricular rate. As we can see here, there's a patient having ST depression starting from V1 to V4. So rapid AF may show, of course, ST depression with nearly the same mechanism as an SVT, either rate-dependent myocardial ischemia or sometimes repolarization abnormality with rapid AF. So let's summarize the causes of ST depression. Of course, the first two causes that come in our minds whenever we see ECGs showing ST depression is non-ST elevation and critical heart syndrome beside also STEMI as it may occur as a reciprocal ST depression. And also we have non-ischemic causes like hypokalemia, dejoxin effects, secondary repolarization abnormalities, SVT or AF with rapid ventricular rate. So the question that force itself upon our minds is how can I differentiate between them? The first thing to check is the clinical presentation and whenever a patient has symptoms suggestive of ongoing myocardial ischemia, this ST depression is caused by non-ST elevation acute coronary syndrome or STEMI until proved otherwise. Then the second thing we need to check whether there is a presence or absence of ST elevation and or hyperacuity wave because ST depression can be a reciprocal depression to opposing ST elevation in patients with STEMI. Part of posterior STEMI in V1, 2, 3, and if we put posterior ECG lead, it would show C elevation, part of lift main equivalent, or part of the winter syndrome. Then check the morphology whether it is horizontal, down sloping, or up sloping. And of course, horizontal and down sloping due depression are most suggestive of myocardial ischemia. And of course, don't forget the famous morphological pattern of the sagging of C-segment in case of digoxin therapeutic effect and you should put this morphological pattern in your mind as a photo memory. Then the magnitude of ST depression and we are applying here the same rule as in ST elevation. The higher the magnitude of ST depression or the deeper and the higher the possibility of myocardial ischemia, of course. And then look for associated ECG signs. For example, if you detect pathological Q waves or T of inversion, it is suggestive of presence of non C elevation acute coronary syndrome. If you detect voltage criteria of IVH or RVH or evidence of left bundle or right bundle, I suggest secondary repolarization abnormalities. Long QT interval or prominent U wave, I would suggest hypokalemia. Regular narcomplex tachycardia with absence of clear sinus P wave, I would suspect supraventricular tachycardia with secondary ST depression. If I check there is irregular narcomplex tachycardia with absence of persistent P wave, I would suspect AF with rapid ventricular rate as a cause of ST depression. So clinical presentation, check for ST elevation or hyperacuity wave, morphology of ST depression, magnitude and associated ECG sign. So as a summary, these are the famous cause of ST depression with non-ST elevation and STEMI as the first possibilities followed by the non ischemic cause as we can see here. So at the end of this interesting lecture, we understood today the ACG criteria of ST depression, their clinical significance and the causes of ST depression besides myocardial ischemia and how to differentiate between them. And our take on this today, ST depression carries a high risk prognosis in patients with non-ST elevation acute coronary syndrome. And not always it is non-ST, it can be part of reciprocal depression with STEMI or left main equivalent. So always check whether there is coexisting ST elevation or not before jumping to a diagnosis of non-ST. Thank you very much for your watching.